Uh, welcome back to Louise's Bible Study and my very special friend, Sammy Hughes. I am just so thrilled to have him on here with us because he is so full of wisdom and knowledge. And when we left off, we were talking about people's responsibility that they have once they're born again. And you know, Sammy, what came to my mind when we were talking about that was in Proverbs, it says to have, have to get um, knowledge understanding and wisdom yes and you know the thing that people don't realize is getting knowledge and understanding comes through our effort mm -hmm. the wisdom is given supernaturally by the holy spirit but he's got to have something to work with and you you know so many people just when i when they come to me and we get started a bible study they want me to spoon feed them. I don't mind spoon feeding you for a while. I don't mind carrying you around on my hip for a while. But then there comes to be a point in time where you have your own personal responsibility. And, um, you know, I can talk to this because I deal with girls all the time, as I said, in the jail. And, and they're, they didn't come from a disciplined background. Mm. Uh, and so getting them to turn around and become more um, spiritually focused and disciplined, uh, even when they're in the jail and don't have any other outside factors pressing in on them, they still are like children and they just want to, you know, do this and that and other. We have to learn something because if you don't know something, uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't have much to work with. He has to work with what you know. And uh, we we have, Sammy and I were talking about this, but we, we have had days, uh, I guess I would say, and we have gone through a period of the word movement. That's what I call it. And that's when I was went out to Ramah. And, uh, and everybody was opening up churches everywhere and getting excited and this, that, and other. And then, like so many things, it just sort of died down, you know. And we didn't see the Spirit and the Word come together. And Smith Wigglesworth prophesied that in the end, the Spirit and the Word would come together. And so, you know... In order to have the Holy Spirit come together, you've got to you've got to introduce him to your people. Yes. And you have to make a place for him. Because he's a gentleman. And I think there is a lack of reverence mm. in our churches. We have taken it too lightly. Mm. And you know, when we were in prayer meeting or when prayer the other night. The one thing kept coming to me, and I looked down, and my pastor had his shoes off, so I said, we must be on the same ground. But he said, the word came, take your shoes off, you're on holy ground. You know, I don't think we, we realize that. We, we, we make an innocence, yes, the Lord lives in me, and I am the temple of God, and this, that, and that. But we, we have to teach people how to respect God. He says that in Ezekiel. He said, you shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane, between the common and the, the, the pure. People do have to be taught that. But one of the, one of the big um, accusations mm -hmm. or one of the big convictions Mm -hmm. that the prophets made to the people of Israel that the prophets, the priests, the kings, the people, all of them were profane. They had all abandoned the holiness that God required. They went through the motions. Mm -hmm. They went through the motions, but there was no heart mm -hmm. in what they would do. Mm -hmm. Like even mm -hmm. in Malachi, you get them bringing diseased lambs to offer for a sacrifice because they didn't want to give up their good lambs. Uh -huh. And um, Yeah, I was so, just reading that. <clears throat> I was just reading that. And so yeah. that there was that total yeah. disregard of the 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 
the all, the God of all. Our, our problem is is that we have lost the place of standing in awe. What does it say? Stand in awe and sin not. And I think when we get to a place that we can begin to appreciate this God, yes, he is holy, and yet he loves us. Mm. No, we have a hard time putting the two together. Um, and I think it's unfortunate, you know, I lost my father when I was in the fourth grade, and he was very, very special to me, very special. And I have had that big hole in my heart for a long time, and I was looking in all the wrong places for mm. uh, that hole to be filled up by some other man or something, you know. And bless God, he did send me Larry, but Larry is a man. And he does have, you know, clay feet, and I have clay feet. We all have clay feet. And, but we, we're always running around trying to find somebody that can make everything just perfect. You know, we want that perfect person. There's only one perfect, and his name is Jesus Christ and God Almighty. And as I was praying and meditating one day, um, God said, Louis, I want you to envision yourself crawling up in my lap and putting your head on my shoulder. Mm. Now, some of you out there are thinking, what? And I'm going to tell you, it was transforming to realize that I can crawl up in my father's lap which I haven't done since I was a little girl, and crawl up in my father's lap and put my head on his shoulder. And he said, and release all your care to me. Mm -hmm. And I'll take care of yes. it. Yes. And I'll take care of it. But, you know, we compare our Heavenly Father so often to our earthly fathers, which do have feet of clay. And what God wants us to see him is as Jesus presented the Father. Yes, perfect representation of the Father. Uh-huh, yeah. And so we need, the only way you're going to find that, the only way you're really going to find that is by studying the Scriptures and getting to know Christ and getting to know Jesus and getting to know the Father through His Word, okay? And, you know, I just recently had something that I had to say to somebody one time because they just would not keep their Word. Mm. Um, and, you know, it was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then, invariably, you could count on it. They were not going to show up. And that's not going to happen. You know, they wouldn't keep the word. And I'm going to say something that's going to sound a little strange. But let me tell you something. One of the reasons people today can do not keep their word, Sammy, and the reason they have so much trouble trusting this word it's because they don't keep their own word. Mm. Yep. If you start learning to swear by your hurt and change not, mm -hmm. you're going to start realizing that God is the same way. He is never changing. He doesn't. He doesn't. And we need to put that <laughs> confidence in Him um, that, that He's got our best interests at heart. And, and you know... I just want some people out there that are really hurting right now. I just feel like we need to pray for y'all. I think there are people that are just so down over the things that are going on in this world today. And we are living in trying times. Um, we've not been left out of the picture because God painted that picture in Matthew and, and Thessalonians and Timothy. He told us that there would be very, very difficult times. And um, I know that when I was laying in the ICU and God said, you want to stay here or come home, or come home, you know, or stay home here, I said, no, I'll stay. But I'll tell you what, I could look back on that one sometimes and think, can I have a redo? Um, because I didn't really know all that I was signing on for. We don't always know what we're signing on for, but we know the end of the story. Well, you know, sometimes people... Um, feel that those of us who believe that God knows how to make a difference between those that are His and those that are not for Israel 
when the when the plagues came to Egypt, they were in the land of Goshen. They didn't have plagues in the land of Goshen. They had them in Egypt. God knows how to take care of his own. He knows how to take care of those that are righteous while the wicked are going to come to that place of judgment. So some of us, I'm, I'm one of those, I believe in the rapture. Okay. I believe in it. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be. I'm not going to go sit out on a mountain and sit and look up to the, you know, I'm not going to do that because the Lord said occupy, yeah. do business till right. I get there. Amen. So be alert and watchful. But I do believe that God knows how to take us out uh, when, he is, when his time has reached it. And sometimes those of us who believe that are called escapist. We're called those who just, you just want to, you just want to get out. Well, you know what? Luke says, pray that you may be worthy to escape all these things that are going to come on the earth. Hey, I think I'm being biblical. <laughs> I think sometimes we put ourselves in bad places and then we expect God to come and rescue us when we, we really, he didn't give us permission to do that anyway. Um, <laughs> I remember <clears throat> recently I had got, yeah, I was, I was somebody that wanted to fill out my time doing earthly things. I rode horses. Okay. Well, after falling off a number of times and breaking 10 ribs, I finally got the picture that this wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. I had a family intervention. Okay, fine. I'm okay with that. And then, um, when I, um, was, went back to thinking, okay, I'll go play tennis and fill some time up with that. And, uh, I had the impression I was going to save everybody on the tennis courts, and it wasn't working that way. Matter of fact, I was sliding downhill, going backwards, and I came home, and I realized, and, you know, uh, it just, things were not lining up. They just weren't lining up. And the Lord spoke to me something, Sam, and he says, you know, Louise, there is a separation. Mm -hmm. There is a time of separating. It doesn't mean that you don't, aren't a part of the world, but you don't fellowship with them all the time and That's, he said there is a mm -hmm. separating of yourself unto mm -hmm. the work that i've called you to you're in it but not of it yeah mm -hmm. and once i once i reached that point of realizing that it was stripping away you know of, of really getting my attention so of moving you know from this place things begin to line up now i'm not saying they were easy because when you start lining up with God, mm -hmm. that's when Satan really gets mm -hmm. busy, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And he really does. But it's a good time to grow up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a really good time to grow up. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, you know, the scripture <laughs> says, they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. So to believe in the rapture, to believe that there is coming, this point in time, that the Lord is going to, Come shout, blow that trumpet, the dead's going to get up, we're going to go. <laughs> that's going to happen. But to, to believe that doesn't, that's not escapist because you live until he comes. You occupy, you fulfill those responsibilities like mm -hmm. we were talking about Esau last time. Mm -hmm. You fulfill the responsibility before the Lord the the thing that that was i was i just read the other day it said that those who confess that they are looking for a city whose builder and maker is god and god says because of that he said i'm not ashamed to be called their god god's not ashamed of us for believing that there is a place that god has built well, you know, Abraham, he lived in tents. Of course, they, they were tent dwellers back then, you know. But when he got out of the land of, of Ur, <coughs> of the Chaldees, and he began to walk into the promises that God had for him, and so he obtained great wealth, uh, tremendous wealth, actually. Mm -hmm. But he never got out of the tent. And it's funny because you think, well, why would he not get out of the tent? Because I think Abraham knew something that the rest of us have lost. That was not his home. He was here. He was. He had been placed here to do a job, okay, 
And but 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 he wasn't rooting down here because he knew there was a place in heaven yes. that was so much better. Yes. And so he wasn't putting everything in one basket. I know when our house burned down, Sammy, everything people make a big deal about your your things your mother gives you, your grandmother mm. gives you, all oh, the night and all all that went up in smoke. Jesus tells us. Don't put your confidence in these earthly things because mm -hmm. they can be here today and gone tomorrow. And I can testify to that. But I realized when I came through that, I could have built a huge home back. I mean, a, a really big home and filled it up with all the stuff. I didn't want that. I didn't want that. I, did, I knew that we were here to occupy but not to root. Mm. And that... We're going to, having lost it on a fire, we're going to lose it all when we go to the rapture. So I'm just leaving it behind for the next heathen to come along and take it over. That's fine. But you know, where is your heart? Yeah. Where is your heart? Well, I think that because times are difficult, they are so difficult. Um, when, when Israel was in Egypt and God sent word by Moses tell Pharaoh let my people go he went to the people first and he said hey God sent me mm -hmm. I'm going to tell Pharaoh to let y'all go and they're they're so delighted because they've been crying <laughs> out so Moses goes tells Pharaoh he said who are you and who's your God <laughs> forget that and he actually said I'm going to show you you got time to be fooling around I'm going to bear down on you even harder well the people because the work the pressures got greater and then Moses come back, comes back the next time God sends him back and got, Moses goes to the people and says this is what God says because their life was so hard, they could not hear the word of the Lord. Isn't that in Hebrews? It's it's actually over in Exodus. But it's also over here in Hebrews, and we're right here. And it says that Paul tells them that you know um, God God spoke to y'all, but you had hardened your heart. You had so hardened your heart by sin and unbelief that God could not get through to you, and He had to move on. Do you know, I'm going to tell you something. Um, we're going to pray here in a minute, but I just want to say this. Uh, some people out there are saying, well, I'm a skeptic. Um, I don't believe anything you're saying. What do you have to lose, my friend? You have, you have hell to lose is what you and gain heaven by receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior. You may not understand everything, but I can guarantee you, you get one shot at this really and truly. And um, I had I, one time I, I made this little business card. It's yeah. a witnessing card yeah. the size of a bin. Yeah. It said, what in the hell are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Cryptic message. Perfect message. <laughs> and then, of course, on the back, it, yeah. it was a, yeah. it, call yeah. us up. a scripture to help you get saved, but... Um, just a little attention get, and that's the, that's a that's a big question right now. What you know, people have this weird idea that somehow Satan's lord over hell, and he's the he's the yeah. potent. He's nothing. He gonna burn like he's everybody already, else. He's already had his teeth snatched out, and so all he can do is gum you right now, and he's doing a pretty good job of gumming a lot of Christians. But let me tell you something. Um, we we have got to realize that we've got one chance at this. We got one good good slot, and I don't want anybody out there that it feels like you know God's been Holy Spirit's been tugging on you. Um, he's been pulling your chain. He's been listening to you, and he says, you know, you didn't stumble across these two people um, that are southern and hicky as heck. Uh, on this podcast for nothing, okay? He said, you know, um, I think we need to get beyond stereotypes and listen to the message. And the message is that we are coming very close 
to the rapture. I think we're living in the end of the end times, and I think God wants you to get into the family. And um, so we need to pray right now. Sammy, well, I want to add one oh, thing. Okay. Oh, one, one thing. You can choose not to be saved now. This is as easy as it's going to ever be. You can get saved after the tribulation starts because right. you'll be here. And you can get saved during right. that time, but it's probably going to cost your head. <laughs> uh, it's going to be bad times. It's bad. Not, this is the easiest time that it will ever be to turn your heart and acknowledge the great sacrifice that the Lord Jesus made for you. I don't think people say, well, you're just trying to scare us. No, we're not scaring you. We're not scaring you. We're just telling you the truth. We're just telling you the whole truth, okay? And if after we pray for those that have received the Lord, I wish you would write to me, write right on the pot, write to us, and we'll 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 love to answer some of your questions, okay? We're here for you, all right? So if you're listening and you've never received Christ as Lord and Savior, just pray this prayer after Sam, you go ahead and pray. Just pray with me. Lord, I am a sinner. My life has been ruined by my own hand. And Father, I come before you now acknowledging my sin, confessing all the things that I've done in rebellion to you. And I'm asking you that because of, the, of Jesus that you will forgive me. I do believe Jesus is your son that he came, that he lived a beautiful, sinless life, but he died on a cross, not for anything that, that he had done. He died for my sins, for what I had done. And I do acknowledge him. I received that great price that he paid. I ask that you would cleanse me, that you would recreate my spirit man, come and live in my heart, and let me live in relationship with you. I confess you as Lord of my life, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you've prayed that, I would love for you to get in touch with us, Sammy, tell people how they can get in touch again with you so we can, they can come to our church. Um, the website is New Life Tuscaloosa. We've got all kind of contact information on there. New Life Tuscaloosa. And um, you can find messages that I do. I do my Sunday messages on YouTube. And that's also called New Life Tuscaloosa. Dot com. Dot com. No, it's dot org. New oh. Life Tuscaloosa dot org. Dot org. New Life Tuscaloosa dot org. And um, it's got all the contact information there. Okay. And we are in Cottondale, Alabama, right on University Boulevard, <clears throat> right beside Shabley's Mexican Grill. And I feel like everybody in Tuscaloosa knows where that is. <laughs> but we're right beside yeah. Shabley's Mexican Grill there in Cottondale, right on the, right on the University Boulevard. Is it 10 o'clock in the morning? 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. No guarantee of when we will be through, but most no, of the time it's no. around 12. Uh, please come and join us. I think you will just so so really be blessed. Uh, the future things that we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to have Sammy back if I have to twist his arm, uh, is we're going to talk on, uh, we're coming up on the season of witchcraft. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we need to we need to we need to understand that this is real, people. I, I had a real witch on my show one day, one day who, who who had converted and received Christ as the Lord and Savior. But she told me some things that made the hair stand up on the back of my head. And uh, we got to come. We got to really understand what we're dealing with. And I want us to get into teaching more about this issue of the spirit versus the flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how we overcome it through faith. So join us again, and we will be back and love every single one of you. Bye-bye. God bless you.